this, we'll see bumper crops. Opening grain prices at the Chicago Board of Trade. Spring wheat, 423 a bushel. Oats at $1.75. Barley and corn unchanged. Holding steady. I'll be back in a minute with today's... Growing program. up on a farm was a great experience. My dad, mom, and brothers, we did everything together. And we'd work hard in our fields all day. Then mom would fix us one of her big dinners. Lord, we thank you for these blessings and for this food that you have provided. Amen. Let's dig in. Jerry, pass the mashed potatoes. Hey, we were able to go out and look at the wheat fields. Today. Dinner was Boy, the best David time for our family. You know, David would talk nonstop about being a cowboy. And Charlie over there, he was always making us laugh. Dinner was certainly my brother Bobby's favorite time of the day. I'm Jerry, the oldest. I kind of had to watch out for these little guys. Mom and Dad sure had their hands full, and they used every opportunity to teach us something new about the farm and hard work, but mostly about love and respect. I guess you could say we were a pretty close family. Our farm was big, with wheat fields stretching as far as my eyes could see. Dad worked hard planting those fields, and by the end of the summer, the wheat would be ripe and the harvest would be ready to bring in. He'd say to us, boys, when the harvest is ready, we have to be ready, or we could lose the whole crop. I knew how important the harvest was, and I never doubted for a minute we'd be ready. But it wasn't harvest time yet. And on the farm, we had a lot of other work to keep us busy, like saddling up and moving our cattle to the south pasture. <laughs> Riding with Dad and Uncle John was always an adventure. And even when things were a little more than I could handle, Dad still believed in me. And somehow it always worked out. Once the job was done, before heading home, we talked, just as men, about hard work, good friends, and of course, the harvest. I never left that pasture without learning something important from my dad. And I never left without bringing home something special for mom. While we waited for our wheat to ripen, Charlie and I would help dad haul hay. The two of us would work as hard as we could to see how many bales of hay we could bring in. You see, the more we brought in, the more we could brag to our friends when we went to town on Saturday. I remember that day because it was really hot, hotter than usual, even for July. And though my dad never complained, I could tell he was having one of those headaches. Sure thing, Dad. But we finished bringing in the hay and went straight to work on the combine so it would be ready for the harvest. It always amazed me how much work Dad could do. Boys, I can't and I worked right along beside him. Like he did so often, Dad took us for a walk through the fields that night. The setting sun made everything warm and golden. Dad used to tell Bobby that God painted it that way just for us. We talked about the day we had together. We talked about the harvest. It wouldn't be long now. Dad said it was gonna be a great harvest. It had been a long day. And I slept hard that night. So hard I didn't hear what was happening in our house. The next morning, I woke to voices, familiar voices, but they seemed out of place so early in the day. Why were they here? I wondered what was happening. All right, come on, let's go. I heard mom and grandma talking in whispered voices. Then mom called us all together. Jerry, Charlie. Davy, I need to talk to you. Something has happened to your father. I looked into her eyes. 
I knew it was bad. Last night, he became very ill. We tried to help him, but there was nothing we could do. Your daddy died. Your daddy's in heaven. My dad was gone. In an instant, our lives were changed forever. His headaches, we thought it was just the heat. Time seemed to stand still. It hurt so much. And it felt like it would never go away. Lord, you know what a terribly hard time it is for us right now. But we thank you so much for being here for us. Mom did her best to keep going. Mealtime was the hardest, though. We prayed for strength. We needed each other now more than ever. We missed him so much. The next few days were busy ones. Uncle John was the first one there to lend a hand. We all pulled together to help things along. Even our friend Amy would come by and help us with our chores. We'd walk through the fields talking and trying to make sense of it all. I remember your dad saying, it was Amy who reminded me that when my dad needed help, he would pray. And she thought that maybe we should too. We did pray, and we talked about the good times, and tried to look ahead. But ahead, all I saw were problems. I was worried about the harvest. It was coming soon, and like Dad said, if we weren't ready, we'd lose the whole crop. I couldn't let that happen. I didn't want to lose the harvest. I didn't want to let Dad down. Being the oldest, I felt such a responsibility. For the first time in my life, I was really afraid. I prayed that God would send someone to help. I thought that things would get better, but they only seemed to get worse. The weather got hotter and hotter, and the wheat was ripening sooner than anyone expected. My worst fears were coming true. With Dad gone, there was no one to work in the fields. It was hard, but Mom, all of us, we kept praying. It was early morning, and Charlie and I were at the barn feeding our horses. I used to love this time of the day, but now it was just a reminder that we were one day closer to losing our wheat. It was usually pretty quiet around our farm, but this morning there was a sound, faint and off in the distance at first, a kind of roar that was getting stronger and louder. believe my eyes. One after another, big, huge combines. It seemed like the whole world was coming to our farm. They started in the big field, the one to the north. They're real sweeping the wheat into the combines. Side by side, they moved from field to field.
watched them unload the golden wheat. I thought about Dad and my prayers, and I understood. I wasn't alone. All these people, they had work of their own to do, but they left their fields to come and help us. Together, they did what no one could have done alone. And one day, they brought in the whole harvest. The harvest was finished. The wheat was saved. The fields were clean. All the families gathered in the field north of the farm for the biggest harvest meal I had ever seen. I was amazed at how many people had come to help. It was a time to celebrate. Everyone had a part in helping with the harvest. Why, there was Dad's best friend, Mr. Hansen, and Amy's brother, Tom. Mom couldn't believe that Aunt Sally and Mrs. Johnson were getting along so well. And there was Harry Bender and Mr. Sanders. Well, it wasn't that they didn't get along, it's just that they never did much together. Yeah, I knew I was part of something special here. But I guess the harvest is something that can bring people together. Uncle John said this whole day reminded him of the story in the Bible when a lot of people were hungry to know God, but there weren't enough workers to tell them. Jesus said, when the harvest is ready, pray and ask God to send people who will help. Well, that's what we did with our harvest, and it's a day I'll never forget. Helping with the harvest changed all of us in one way or another. We thank you for this harvest which we're able to bring in. It was time to come together. It was harvest time. I still come back to the farm and walk in the fields just like I did when I was a kid. These fields were my whole world. And the things God taught me that summer when I saw everyone come together to harvest our wheat have stayed with me all my life. Now I see the lesson of the harvest. There is another field. It's God's field. Filled with people who are ready to respond to Him. And just as my family prayed for someone to come and help us bring in the harvest, people all around the world are praying that someone would help them bring in the harvest in their land, in their city, on their campus. Everywhere I look, I see people who are lost without the love and message of Jesus Christ. And the urgency that we felt on our farm is the same urgency that exists today. We can all do something. We can pray, give, reach out to a friend, even go to another land. This could be the greatest spiritual harvest time in history, and that's why we are all needed. It's time to come together. It's harvest time. Let's pray. Father, we uh, ended where we started, a concern for the harvest. And God, you have done just that. You've used us to bring in a harvest. And 
we lay it right back at your feet and uh, we thank you for the privilege of being your combines, your workers, to bring it in. God, we would certainly pray, please, may this not just be a temporary five-year journey. May each one of us continue to have a passion, a longing, an ache in our heart for the harvest that's still there and still ripe and still needs to come in. Please, Jesus, cause us to be faithful until each one of us meets you one day face to face. There is no harvest in heaven. It only happens here. Please cause us to be faithful. Thank you for this journey, God. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is a Communion Sunday. And I'd like to read what Paul says about that as the men come forward and we prepare the elements. Paul talks about...